Hey, this is Luke. Welcome to Lower It Up Podcast. Powered by Basel D Magazine. We'll be interviewing local creators who work in and around the clock for the crop over season and beyond. Join us on this journey as we go behind the scenes of what makes crop over crop over. Welcome to episode 11 of the Lore It Up podcast, powered by Basel D Magazine, produced and recorded by Robbie at Nameless. On tonight's episode, we'll be having Joyanne from WMBY, Rico and Andwele from Vibe Nation, and Tion Hernandez. We hope you enjoy. Basel Today we are here with Joyanne from WMBY. <laughs> and we're just here to discuss the festival as a whole. We're here to discuss entertainment, especially, and looking at the entertainment scene in Barbados as a whole and fets in Barbados as a whole, because mm -hmm. Joya has been in the game for quite some time. How many years you've been in entertainment, Joya? Oh, dear, Joanne? I'm going to have to give up my age. <laughs> it's been a while, probably like 16, 17 years. 16, 17 years. Yeah. So you've seen things change and evolve in yep. the entertainment sphere in the fatting sphere. It has grown. It has evolved from where it was before. And where do you think it should go? That would be my first question to you. Well, right now, I think that in events need to move out and go international mm -hmm. because we've been stuck in a bubble. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot more leg room that we can do here. Mm -hmm. And then because of all the inland challenges and all the right tape, you mm -hmm. got to go through. Sometimes you don't get that. You don't have that hurdle mm -hmm. when you go overseas. And it's time for us to take our products to another level. I agree with you 100%. I, I would have said this before too on the podcast mm -hmm. that events need to evolve and start looking for markets outside yeah. of Barbados. They do. The country needs to miss us a bit. Yeah, really and truly. So we need to go so people can really appreciate the value that we bring to the table because when the local promoters are doing events, that is what really helps boost the economy. Mm -hmm. People come to the country, the tourists, people go online buying tickets. There's not much that is being offered here unless us, the promoters, put events out there. Mm -hmm. That's very, very true. So as you said, they form an integral part of the Barbadian entertainment scene, far less the festivals. Like, yeah. If they don't have them, people don't come. And we do add with bringing foreign exchange into this country. That's very true. And because then you have all the overseas contingents coming in to jump, party, mm -hmm. go to the regular fests. That is exactly it. All foreign party, orange economy is like, there's an economic driver because you're bringing in foreign exchange. Exactly. For example, there's a big event on the 17th, and I'm sure that people flying in and booking tickets. Mm -hmm. And Barbados is getting boost. We're a dot on the map. Nobody, yeah. Some people don't even know where Barbados where is. is. It's true. I know everybody's hearing about Barbados, 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 Barbados. Barbados was big when Rihanna made her name. Mm -hmm. But know that you have all of these different entities coming together and bringing these things to the island. We're flying. Yeah, exactly. We saw, you know, as you say, we got. Big, big, big events coming up on the 17th, and yeah. a lot of people now paying attention. A lot yeah. of people now seeing Barbados in a different light, mm -hmm. putting us on the map. And I think for the whole of July, really, is mm -hmm. a, a full flood of activities. Yeah. The promoters really going above and beyond with the artists that they're bringing to the table. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't even know how we get it, though, but it's from one event to the next event to the next yeah, event to the next that's event. That's right. And that's what we want. We want to know that. We want to become like Trinidad Carnival, these stars and the who's, the who's going Trinidad. We need, we need to get them that's inland. We, yeah, that's really what it is we need with Barbados, you know, to really, well, I would say reach back that level. Because, you know, you will have that for Kaduma, yeah. but you want, yeah. <laughs> you want it for sure for people to be coming in constantly throughout the season. I even have people asking me uh, to this morning, Mm -hmm. Saying should they come out for crop over one well, book a flight mm -hmm. and looking at events saying, Oh, if the events can be sell out, like, tell me your dates and tell you what events to go to and tell you when to book yeah. from. We can go start a little shop run business because a lot of people want to come here and experience the culture. Mm -hmm. And we have to do more to get people on the island and let the interest repeat. All the artists, the performers, everybody has to play their part because it's not just about going on stage and singing a That's song. Right. You need to get your information out there, you need to That's post, right. you need to email. You need to get your stuff playing. Like send things to international DJs. Send the music far and above because even if our local people don't embrace your music, send it and let it get played somewhere else so you right. are more recognized. But that's exactly it. That's it. It's like you need to move beyond these shores. Like yeah. with Stabby the Garda, remember when Stabby 
He song go somehow and I play go sabi go sabi go sabi. <laughs> Trini used to love that song. Mm. He used to play on the radio that year. That was 2015, 2016. Mm. Them they understand one thing he the same. Yeah. But then they love that song. You couldn't get enough of that song. Even when Steffi did, I can't my sheep my tongue. Yeah, oh my God. You that was that? huge. But if people don't, you, you really gotta believe in your craft. And sometimes they are local DJs. People would say, like, were you flying in this person to play a few fat? You got local DJs. But you have to do something to grow your craft. Yeah. I don't want to come to an event. I know where your playlist is gonna be. Yeah. Yeah. You, you you gotta push your craft so that I can see, okay. This is cool. Trevi DJs get international bookings. Right. No, I hardly that, see our own DJs. Exactly. I, I And you the same thing. I, I wanted to touch on that, you know. I wanted to get into <laughs> that. But, you know, as you touch DJs, they start to get mad and then they get ripped off. Okay. So that's fine. My back, my back broad. broad. My back very broad. <laughs> we got broad I backs. Very many legs. So yeah. I, nobody can shift me. But, but sometimes people don't like to hear the hard truth. That's true. And that's why some of us stuck in the place that we are stuck in because we don't and and I could speak from my experience before when I first started event logistics and gate control and stuff I started with Russell Grant doing frazzle mm -hmm. events and reminisce mm -hmm. and stuff and it, it was a learning curve. I was not where I am today. Mm -hmm. I was working with a, a six man team we run about doing this in this corner. We ain't got no cash deals. We ain't got no whatever. But we had enough skill set to get the job done. Mm -hmm. So you got to evolve yourself. So now hardly anybody could kind of tell me how to, to do get event. control exactly. or event logistics. Or, and I think that we do a superb job. We got a strong team. And we are like glue because we respect each other. We live like family. So our bond as a group is unbreakable. I could call at any hour and say, all right, look, I need you to go to this job. Mm -hmm. So that's what you need to build. When you build a rapport and you grow and you grow and you grow, you can add so. I don't know what it has for the future because at the end of the day, that's another thing. Our events are very seasonal. Mm -hmm. So it's like everybody so trying to catch work other thing. in July. Yeah. Everybody events are on the same everybody days. Everybody cramming into days, July. Everything. Trying to but catch then what happens to September, change. October, November, December? November, the country December. still needs to thrive. Exactly. It's like you could spread it out of the calendar. You do yeah. one event a couple of you could do another one later on in the year. It's like, but I think what it is too is because that with the tourism market, mm -hmm. you're not sure if you're going to get that traffic coming yeah. in. Everybody try to cram everything in that sardine can for that one period. And Shit. then you have to decide who event I'm going to support. And so you're like, working a on a budget. can be at this event and you, let's say both events is the 16th. The tourists can't go to both at the same time. So this is where we say again, where we need to evolve. Promoters got to start thinking outside the box and stretch. We are not known as a one trick pony where everything happening in everything July. Everything happening at Quapo and then We need to stretch and pull things all through the year. So Barbados is now known in the entertainment industry as this is the go-to place this for a good event. It. This is it. Like, you got food and rum. Let's say that's going to be October. Mm -hmm. Then you got November. I you need got a pass for that. I've never been to that. <laughs> 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 Don't worry. We can talk to you, BTM. I'm sorry, you all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, yeah, you got, like, basically independence in November now, which yeah. is people starting to call the second crop over because mm -hmm. you're going to hold people coming in, especially a lot of people in the diaspora, Mm -hmm. And people starting to throw a lot of events. You got December there again. Mm -hmm. You got January. You got Feb. You see around that February, March period. Mm -hmm. with people who can't go down to carnival, who mm -hmm. still want that carnival feel and they're hearing mm -hmm. the music and all that. That's a period that you could throw events. You got all that, what? That was Oisin's Fish Festival coming up. Right. You got all these time and periods of time. And then open up and these kind of yes. places that people don't know nothing about and pull the right. traffic in different directions. One of the other things that really impacts us from doing events to... There are too much protocols that you have to go through mm -hmm. just to pull off mm -hmm. one event. And it's a deterrent it's, it, no, it's to seriously. a lot of people because where you could go to another country and you don't have to go to, you, you shouldn't have to go to five different entities yeah, to, to, to do one event, pull off. to pull off something. I think, I think they're streamlining it now with the online process, but I agree with you completely. People tell me, come let me do an event. And they're like, you know how much things no. I got to go through? I got to go through cost cap. I got to go bra. I got a good this body for song. I got a good VAT. This. I got a good liquor license. And then you're going to go through the weight loss process because it's too much. It's too much and it's bare stress. And that, yeah. I have a whole set of money I got to lick out I'm, and I take it inside. Barbados is a little backwards where entertainment is concerned mm -hmm. because when you touch at mm -hmm. Trinidad and I've traveled to Grenada and Miami and different places executing events and it's a... The, the only headache is actually setting up the infrastructure and thing for the events. You don't have this headache and this red tape because 
those people embrace events, embrace the activity embrace in the culture, it, yep. and they want the people coming to the country. This, this so you want exactly us to bring it. people to the country, but here it is you being a stickler for uh, all of these other things that you want us to go through. And limitations to facilitating people coming to the country yeah. and enjoying themselves. It's like, it's something we said before on here, it's like the orange economy. All oh, this stuff is within the orange economy, but if you don't take it seriously, yeah. you can't get nine out of it. Let me touch on the skeleton in God, skeleton in closet. Mm-hmm. It's too much double standards. Yes, yeah, because true. when entities that put in our events, they don't go through this right thing. No, they don't. And no, then do why not. it is that only certain events, or let me call them the bougie events, mm-hmm. are being targeted. Mm-hmm. But here is a mommy a whole of a fat in the ghetto. He ain't going through no right here. He ain't going through no right here. He ain't stamping the ticket. No, he ain't doing no, this. Like I ain't calling a spade a spade. Why are you targeting a direct group when we are the ones that are trying to hold the economy together? That's now, it. Now, if all of us get together and they say, you know what? To mm-hmm. France with this. Exactly. We holding off for the events. We're coming into this country. Exactly. The people, the people can kind of, oh, crap over, got any events, crap over. I am not going to knock my government events and mm-hmm. the events that they're trying hard to put on. But let me be real. Mm-hmm. Let me be real. Nobody is paying a ticket and traveling to come here to go to the museum to watch art. Yeah, exactly. It's true. Some of the children not even being taught poetry in school, so they're not going to Enjoy poetry any reading. Type of poetry reading at all. Because the school system's not offering it. So if we really get real and touch on these things, to have people embrace and come to these things, one of the only things that I see people gravitating to is Pam Panistan. But is that enough to hold the economy together? Yeah, exactly. no, it's, it's not. not. It is not at all. And it's as not. You say, you've got fantastic Pam players, but are people really going to say, I'm coming down and specifically wait, are we, for and that? And then if you're going to do Pan, grow a Pan. Yeah. Encourage your competitions. Yeah. Flying Grenada, Trinidad. Got pound competitions against Barbados and all, and build up the momentum to probably get more children involved in pound playing yeah. and steel pound playing. And a lot but of those eyes, yep. Everybody thought process may not be the same. It's true, and it's it, there are many, many, many ways that not just festival, the festival itself, but entertainment can evolve, mm-hmm. and ways that it could grow and that people could benefit, and not just it being just one big fat and every fat, fat, fat. But there's mm-hmm. art and culture within it. That people just missing out on. And one of the reasons too is that people need to learn to pass the baton is like a relay. Mm-hmm. If you want to win the race, you gotta pass that baton to the next player. Mm-hmm. We are going forward. It can't be the same players in the game all the time because mm-hmm. the, the way of thinking may not change. Mm-hmm. So the younger people that are coming out and the industry changing and they're experts, and I'm not saying to put the people that was doing this for a long time behind the string line, right. but be there to guide. To guide. And to sometimes you have to learn. To, sometimes you have to learn to remove yourself. We got these same people that I grew up hearing handling staging, still doing staging, still wearing the same old drag or uh, black, whatever they're doing. We don't up the game with nothing that we offering. Mm-hmm. And don't evolve. And as a result, nothing else could evolve. And then sometimes people think that because you say this, you're looking to replace them. Right. But you should feel good that you have enough knowledge that you can pass on, go home and rest, and be somebody that you can come in then as a consultant and say, well, look, I think that you can do this in this area and this in this area. But let people get the room to grow. Yeah. you could. New people could bring in new things. New fresh ideas. And nobody's pushing you out or pushing you. Just move into a different arena, mm-hmm. higher up. So you can say, okay, this is what I recommend. Mm-hmm. This is what you should do. This is where you should go. This is who you should look at. I recommend this body to work. Correct. With. Don't say, well, let me bring Luke as a good look to the younger population to make it look like, oh, we've added some heat table, but then Luke's ideas go on scene or on her. Yeah, then what's the whole purpose of it? Yeah, exactly. So all of these things are factors that play a role in where we are today and we can't be further. We absolutely we could be much further. We should be much further. Should be because much, after much, trade, our carnival is kadumant. And we got to push our own terminologies. We don't do carnival. Gee, look, we do kadumant. We do walk you, up. You, you we don't whine. After my own heart. We don't whine. We, we just don't walk pump. up. We, we don't. In a carnival. It's not Barbados carnival. And it is crop over. Because we like to adapt other people's cultures and we don't like to maintain our standard all ground. That's why we don't have... We, we don't have nothing to go by to say it's our own. We always adapt to the policies of other people. I can't even go into tongue and find a nice arranged Barbados shirt to say I can wear. But I sure I can find one in Trinidad. I sure I can find one can. in Jamaica. You absolutely can. Jamaica but then it sure. is here now. Fashion sense is still in a mental block. Mm-hmm. We need gear that when people come here for crop over, we should be seeing people on our brand. Yeah. We should be seeing people in our shirts. They should feel proud to go and 
reassure me I go and start designing my own stuff, but all you know, of these things play a part. You get some shirts, you, you can't find a shirt with, let's say, Barbados or a flag or a stylist version, you flag or Barbados, Kaduma something. Day, fashionable yeah. peat hats, everybody jumping on the road in a peat hat. You, you, you. No, so it's that. a lot of factors that can play for That's us. That's my mothers always talk about. To tweak our growth. So, Joyan, tell me yeah. about your business and how you started <laughs> and what is it that you do specifically? Okay, we started because, as I said, I started with Russell Grant. I mean, he used to do frazzle. Mm -hmm. And he had a lot of faith and confidence in me because I'm a very detailed and meticulous person when it mm -hmm. comes to things that I see in the eye and documentation and that kind of stuff. And he approached me to run the door for him. I was new to it, but I said common sense prevail. Mm -hmm. So I got some of my friends that was close to me that I know that I can trust because you know when you're dealing with people money, everybody want the hey, money. Hey, everybody want the money. Down to the last yep. thing yep. And then because I don't mix, I was never a big person with friends. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have an issue with me like letting in people into his event or anything like that because you don't know who's who, you don't know who watching or whatever. Yes, uh, trust me. So after that, he started recommending me to people because, of course, the money come out straight. <laughs> nobody ain't had no disgrants or anything. Yes, people would have been in their feelings because nobody don't like to hear, no, you got to pay or right. where's your comp or yeah. your name it on the list and everybody gained the feelings. But then after that, it spread word of mouth, word of mouth. And he got me on working for a lot of the different promoters. He got me to work for some people from overseas and stuff. And then I got like jobs for the embassy and stuff, doing private stuff at their homes and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it evolved from there. And then after I had my daughter, we, we never had a name. Mm -hmm. So after I got my daughter in 2012, my best friend, Nat, she suggested, so we don't just name the business after winter. Mm -hmm. So at first I was like, I don't want to go with Winter because there's Winter. So I was like, well, let me use Winter initials, which is where the WMBY comes in because her name is Winter Mercedes and she has a double barrel surname, which is Barker Yearwood. So that's how the letters were formed. Sometimes it gets your mouth muffled yeah. because they get the W and the M, M yeah. but it's her initials. So that's how the name came into play. And then I just start branding my stuff getting more people to come on board, vetting people and stuff, because you can't just come and work on my brand oh, either. Exactly. You, you so know, I vetted <laughs> people. And then most of the people on my team, all of us have business professions, bankers, oh. um, chefs. So I don't just have any, everybody. Everybody on my team has a value coming from a background. Mm. So that's how we were firm. And then you've seen us at literally multiple events across the years. Across the board, yeah. Mm -hmm. Majority most of the time at crop over, but you run yeah, throughout the Yeah, we do stuff privately, mm -hmm. but crop over is when the bulk of the work will come in because as I say, everybody will attack Joyan, but mm -hmm. sometimes the promoter will say with Joyan is well, everybody's to pay, everybody's to and I always tell people if a promoter wants you in their event, they will connect with you before. Absolutely. If they did not connect with you, they, they don't want you. It's, it's as Just simple as that. Just come to the door. You got three options. A ticket, cash, or if your name on the list. If you know you ain't none in the tree, don't come and make an don't issue. Come. Don't so come. So then I've been, I've been branded as the door boss <laughs> or the door girl, the door grouch. The, I've heard it all. <laughs> but it doesn't faze me because at the end of the day, I'm doing a job. I know that I give excellent work. Our integrity is intact. And our work speaks for itself because we, we, we are at everybody's doors and yeah, stuff. You manage yeah. the door because people, again, with so many things in Kwapo, people yeah. think, or not just Kwapo, but entertainment, people just think these things be yeah. streamlined. Like, somebody And they just think that you door. just get her and come to a door, but you just don't do gate control. I do event logistics period. So, mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that everything is, you, you still got to make sure the traffic flow is coming in right, the setup is right. I also work with bars, the cashiers, the reconciliation systems. I mean, I come in and help a promoter set up the entire venue. It's like, like DJ Ross. Ross don't do nothing mm -hmm. unless Joy are there. Because at the end of the day, he could shut his eye and disappear. And, and deal, I know that you know what's everything to be a promoter, deal with all that nonsense. A I promoter so should never with, be coming to deal with issues at their doors. No, never. You should re always remove yourself from that. Because one, it allows you to see what you can improve on going forward mm -hmm. and you don't want the hassle or bustle of being a person to be there saying no and yes and because you can feel obligated mm -hmm. to let him look. Yeah. Whereas Joy, I know I have no obligation to anybody. You. And you name it on your list, you gotta go <laughs> Call Listen, somebody, do what you gotta do, but 
my mother have come to things already. I had a ticket and she had to get a ticket. So let me just say that. Yeah. And that's my mother. So, Simple, so. Yeah. No, that's what I said. But we, said, we enjoy we doing it. We enjoy doing it. I, I was taken to Miami um, last year and the experience was real good. And then they booked me to come back to mm. Miami because they say, well, they, they saved money that they, they were paying out before. And the team was very welcoming and embraced the what we bought from Barbados to Miami because sometimes you be be thinking that you're doing something right all the time. Mm. Somebody coming with a fresh idea and bam, you get better service. Simple as that. Simple. Okay, so tell us where people can find you online. Well, of recent, people can find us on IG at WMBY246. And it was recently done because I am not that technical. Mm -hmm. So I had to go ahead and create a page. Yeah. And then my contact number is 850-7797. But that's also on the page. So I'm accessible. You can link any promoter. You can link, link Bazadi. Yeah. I have my information up yeah. on his page also. That's right. So that's I'm where easy people to can find. find you and yeah. book you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm easy to find. Yeah, that's good. Okay, we just want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast with us, Joanne. Thanks for having me. And this is a busy day. Yes. But I promise I would have been here and yes. made all efforts to get here. And I feel good that we've, we've we, we had, had a successful a, run. Yeah, you had a yeah. good, good discussion. Oh, but you back because like I said, yeah. you, you, you understand it because you was in the business already. Yeah. So you get it. But we hope that they listen. Mm -hmm. And we hope that these podcasts allow them to like bring something fresh to the table like listen listen to the people that have the voices that mm -hmm. being involved in the game mm -hmm. and just try to action it action that's all we want really action it. that's all that's all we want that's all action. we want welcome to lord's up podcast with basil d magazine tonight we are here with it's a vibe team and Dwele and rico chase <laughs> Yep. Good night. Good night. Good night. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to Lower It Up. First time on Lower It Up. And tonight we're here to talk about Vibe Land, Tales of the Road. Mm -hmm. And we'll discuss the other events that they also have on their calendar. We had High Noon already. So we got Vibe Land and then we got scenes later on in December. Correct. But I want to touch on Vibe Land and what it is that people could look forward to, what they can expect. What made you decide to go on this theme, Tales of the Road? What is it that just that we should get into? Mm. So Vibland. Vibland is an imaginary place that we put together concepts and like different attractions to create a theme and just rope everything together and deliver it during crop over. So the whole concept behind Vibland, the reason behind it is because we felt as entertainers in Barbados that it was time for us to step up and bring a new product to crop over, right? True. To start to change the game and put events, especially local events, on a different platform, on an international platform. Yeah, so that's what we've decided then to go with the whole theme, the party. Yeah. Just because every year then it creates a different experience. Mm -hmm. We started off in 2019. Mm -hmm. Correct. With chapter one, which was Welcome to Vibland. That theme right. was just pretty much giving persons a, you know, just a taste, getting the feet wet right. on, you know, what that experience is going to be like. We had different cocktail experiences, mm -hmm. just a situation and a place for you to just come and just be a big child mm -hmm. again. That, that's you right. know, we had, we had a little jumping tent, all kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, just stuff come and just don't normally see yeah, yeah, a exactly. different feel, you know, not yeah. just a regular fat. You want to create, let's just say, an imaginary place. Uh, yeah, we just yeah. want people to just like immerse themselves in just like the experience of what's happening around mm -hmm. them. 2020 then when we had, you know, the whole COVID thing. Right. You still managed to pull off of like Yeah, that's the yeah. thing. Like we were allowed to come outside slightly. Right, a little slightly. Yeah, slight, yeah, slightly, slightly. Yeah. And, you know, we went down to chapter two, which was La Dulce Vida, mm -hmm. which is the sweet life. Mm -hmm. And it was a kind of a Candyland theme mm -hmm. kind of situation. And again, playground for adults. So people right, get the exactly. candies, they dress in the bright colors. And that's true. And then they come out and they just pretty much, you know, bring whatever they perceive that theme to be. Mm -hmm. And they just, you know, they bring that to life. Okay, that was up in St. John, right? That was in St. John. Uh, that plantation, I can't remember that, that name. And, were, and, were you there, Luke? I was there. Okay, I right. was there. I didn't see Luke. I didn't see Luke. I, 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 I was, was just going to say, like, I'm wondering if you're going to go a cuss out here. No, but. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. There's even a picture of me. You, you sent it to me. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 My photographic proof. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. See? Photos, yeah. Photos, so photos, it was, I went there. I remember. you had a car out front, too? Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. yeah there was oh, oh, Yes. Oh, right. I was there. Right. I remember the right. So if you remember, from the time you entered by Bland and St. John, mm -hmm. you will realize that it's just a full candy thing. From the entrance, right down to the decor on the stage, the truss. 
everything everything executed represented the theme. Mm. So every year when we do a theme, just know that the location is we will transform the location to represent the theme. Ah. Yeah. So another fun fact too is that if you look at the flyers, if you look at our promo material, you will realize that it represents a book. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. the first one was chapter one, mm-hmm. second one was chapter two, and now we have chapter three, mm-hmm. Tales of the Road. Mm-hmm. The reason behind Tales of the Road is because earlier this year, it was looking like we were not going to have... The, the very much so like that. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do my jump, right? So what we decided to do is to incorporate incorporate the road into a garden. Mm-hmm. So mesh it too, to bring the vibe and experience alive. So it's just pretty much, again, fantasy. Mm-hmm. We were put down for such a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, me, we miss Kaduma 2020 and 2021. Mm-hmm. And like you said, 2022, like it was shaping up to be the same. Yeah, thing. like, like shaking, So yeah. then, you know, once we got the green light to say, well, yeah, there's actually going to be some form of a crop over this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just decided to say, you know what? People have had a road experience in a while. Well. Mm-hmm. True. And what would be really cool is if we could bring that road experience, literally just like pull it from the road Mm -hmm. and put it into a venue. That's Mm -hmm. good. I like that. I like that a lot. So pretty much what people could look forward to is just seeing, think about all elements that you could possibly think about when Mm -hmm. you think about Kaduma Day, Carnival Day, whatever it is. Mm You know what I mean? You're putting all your costumes. Some people might want to dress up as characters. You might come out in your funky okay, wigs. Okay, yeah. All you right. Might, you might be drinking around with a kettle or somebody pop, you know, something, yeah. you know. Yeah, I'm out of the top. See, you're a Kaduma, so yeah. yeah. You see, right? <laughs> that's true. So you're very, very, I'm out of the toilet too, so exactly. don't black rock, so yeah. Exactly. So that's pretty much what we wanted to encourage and we want to portray. So it's like the ladies could get creative with their, with their beads, you know, put all the beads all over the face, all the different gems. Yeah. And the head pieces that they might have from, you know, two or three years yeah, ago. Exactly. And, yeah, so we just Big pretty off. much want everybody to just come and just be fully part of it. I like that. I like that concept. So it's like a kind of like Kaduma, but yeah. you want the road experience, but you know, not one spot. One spot. One spot. <laughs> one, 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 just them right there. Okay. Yeah. I like that actually. That sounds yeah. really good. As you say, you know, in getting to go on the road, then you could get that road feel. Exactly. And then, and then that was another situation. Then you were hearing some person say, well, you know, I ain't too sure if you want to jump this year mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. But this is perfect. Yeah. Because no, perfect, really and truly. Because no, you know, you, you don't have to necessarily then go and put yourself on the road and that could be for a number of reasons it could yeah. be you're not feeling the road right finances might not be finances, there exactly you understand so you focus no, on you, the thing, you might left early exactly yeah exactly. that's so true so now you have you know that package for much less yeah that's really chat i think that's brilliant you Pre- know create yeah. a costume for create a costume come come. yeah man you never got no sam rules no more but going somewhere and get some feathers yeah you still got you got laurie dash and stuff. laurie yes, dash yeah. there we go yeah, some different stuff like get creative <laughs> and this is july 31st yeah yes mm-hmm. yes 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 so the sunday before kaduma day mm-hmm. Correct. okay that's good yeah so you could get a road experience or even if it is that you let's say you are on the road mm-hmm. you get two days then you could go down there there you go you get you that's sunday like a pre-pump. exactly you know, you a pre-pump. Pre-pump. exactly you know, practice shit you feathers you feel sad you know you could transform now into your other costume for good one yeah but yeah. you know plan out beer but i'm wearing a shirt exactly so <laughs> you know short shorts with the call no the ho- hoochie daddy shirt hoochie daddy shirts exactly <laughs> hoochie daddy shirts a pair of sneakers man a bandana they always say <laughs> that's, that's all you need what more you want right, exactly so just come out the vibe you know yeah man that's funny that's perfect. That's good. I like that concept. Mm-hmm. And I want to touch also to on scenes, like what y'all got idea, what y'all doing for scenes later on down this year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we have some concepts that we're currently toying with, but mm-hmm. you know, the focus right now is way blank. Mm-hmm. But scenes is going to be crazy. You really good. Can y'all have that? All this is. As it usually is. All this is. Can y'all have that in 2020 again too, right? Yeah. You had that in 2020. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That Just before good. we get put up. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and it was really good. Okay, so people can look forward to that too as well. Correct. But you don't obviously it's too early for location. Right. Well, actually, wait, where's the location for Vibe Land? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so let's <laughs> <we're laughs> say it's in the um, St. Michael. Okay, yeah, yeah, right, yeah St. Michael area. Right? It's, uh, it's, okay. quite, it's quite central. All right, that's good. That's a good central location. Yeah, you know, yeah. you have that. It's a beautiful garden. Mm-hmm. And we'll be transforming it. Okay, I like yeah. that. A little song of that. Because y'all transformed the other gardens really nicely. Yeah. St. John, and then it was down the road here across St. Pine, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But this one, yeah. <laughs> oh boy, y'all not ready yeah, for this, this one. This, this one, one so they really pushing it. We really. Is it a, a new location? Like, because the one that uh, y'all did for the chapter one was a brand new location. Nobody did yeah, it before. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so, this one. It's not new, but it hasn't been used in a while. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. I like that. I like the sound of that. Mm-hmm. And what DJs do y'all have on the cards? 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think Black Nation is gonna be there. I okay. I think I think it should be there. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Through, that's, the, that's the only person that we could be there. Uh, that y'all released for now. Yeah, okay, that's for cool. Now. But yeah, Vibe Nation will be there fully fat. <laughs> okay, that's I don't know if you, I don't know if y'all know those boys. You know, yeah, I know. I, I think I'm so. doing every country. You know, they're fellas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They might know about fellas. And bad people, you know, too bad. But they do all right for themselves. They, they, they get you pretty good. Right. So yeah, I, I okay, that's interesting. So what uh, what else should people look forward to? Let's say the I like the whole costume aspect of it, mm-hmm. you know. And so you've been getting good feedback to this event though. This feedback for Vibern has been the best so far. Mm-hmm. True. The amount of traction right now is yeah, because I think for us, y'all really teased it out, and people don't know what it is. So it's yeah. like, what is it? What are they? And doing? that's the thing is like people just see you in like events, you no, know, they simulate like other events, and they're like, wait, 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 I'm listening though. Vibe Nine coming out. So talk to me. What, what, yeah. What's your team? What is y'all yeah. really looking to do? Is like, ah. <laughs> and then they explain it. Yeah, yeah. What a, what a put on. Put on right game B. And then we explain it. Then people are like, yo. All right, yeah. That's dope. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah, good. For sure. That's very, very good. So y'all bring back the same drink specials. Like everything will be in tune with the theme. The same yeah, way that you did yeah, with previous drink, iterations. Specials, different loads, you know, surprises. Giveaways. Um, surprises. That's right, stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Definitely. That's good. They can got a big truck in it too, and mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I don't know, bro. You know what I mean? I can't, I can't confirm or deny. That's no problem. So okay, so let's talk also too about you sponsors that y'all have on board for the event. So basically, so far in terms of sponsors, mm. confirmed right now we have Johnny Walker, mm. Smirnoff, Syrup. Mm. My favorite, also, my favorite beverage in the world, Casamigos. Casamigos. <laughs> I got yeah. tequila on board to that's my, amigo? Bro, that's my drink, dude. Yeah. Yep. Hey, okay. That's okay. That's kind of, uh, yeah. You hey. ever seen the morning? That's what that's, I, that's yeah. exactly how I want to be. Because, <laughs> okay. Have more, we have more coming, but we, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Big up uh, Johnny Walker, Ciroc, Smirnoff. They're, they're other sure. people. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like Hansha, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And of course, up. you will have some form of rum because, again, you know, yeah, you can you know can't you have can't have, have to do rum without, exactly. without rum. You know, True. rum is everything. Rum is everything. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Look forward to that too as well. You know, as you say, more will come on stream. Mm-hmm. So okay, that's good. I like that. I really like that. So and you always do. Normally, they all don't do vibe last so late though. Last, last, not the last the, year. Last 2020, 2020, 2020, yes. Yeah, we moved it. 2020, we yeah, we moved it. it. Right, so we yeah. did the same. It was the same it did, date it was the same in 2020. Same day in 20, right, 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 yeah, yeah. Because the right, very right, first one was it. a little earlier. It was earlier, right? Yeah. That's what I remember. Chapter was one was early. early. The, goal okay. was, the goal was always to move it into the weekend mm-hmm. because we wanted it to be for the culture, mm-hmm. you know, a product for crop over mm-hmm. that people can travel from overseas all around the world and come and experience vibe land. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. I like that. And speaking of which, this year we actually do have a lot of international interest in the brand now yeah. as well. So you know, when the Beijing's come out, you will definitely see a lot of foreigners up in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad then cultures that, and they're like, mixing the up as right. early right. that people can know, or I can yeah. bring a piece of costume, I can travel with a wig, I can design oh, yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know? just get crazy with just it. Right, exactly. Get crazy with it. If you want, come dress up like a shaggy beard. Come out, man. Who, who cares? You who know cares I mean? exactly? Whether you interpret the road to be however you want to express yourself on the road. That's where you're coming to Vibe Land. Perfect, perfect. And let people know where they can find you on social media. On social media, Instagram, at It's A Vibe Bim. That's I-T-S-A-H-V-I-B-E-B-I-M. They can find all the information where they can grab their tickets. All the information. And everything will come You can even go to www.itsavibe.com. On our website. You got it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. That, that, right? That's yeah, we're creating a whole, a whole yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, no. From what the time that I saw the calendar, y'all mm-hmm. wrote our calendar. I was like, yeah. oh, okay, this boy's serious, you know? Like yeah. they're rolling out. They saying these are different experiences, and it's not the same fact that's just being replicated yeah. across yeah. the year, but. Each one has its own it's people, its own feel, its own, own, own identity, own everything. Yeah, and even from like ho- even how we launch the events, we have like movies and that sort of mm-hmm. stuff, trailers for the events, after movies and all sorts of stuff, just promoting the product yeah. itself and the theme. So part of the Vibe brand, one thing that we want to tap into is production. Mm-hmm. You know, producing music, offering soca music into crop over, because it's all for the culture. Mm-hmm. That's the main push behind Vibe brand, behind the Vibe brand. Mm-hmm. Barbados and the culture, the entertainment package that we have to offer. I like that. So we're just building it piece by piece, taking our time, and it's looking really good. It's, it's coming together. Coming together well. Yeah. And this all started over a beverage. Really? Yeah. Funny enough. 
go for a beverage. So let me know how y'all got started with It Survive on a whole. Well, It Survive started basically, it would have come together from us being DJs, actually. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. went out and delivering our product to, to the entertainers, promoters, and then on to the people. And the amount of following that we received, the amount of, the amount of traction, the amount of love and support that we were getting, you know, it was only a matter of time to be branch off into our doing our own events. Yeah, we started off with the Catamaran Cruise on board Jamming when Jamming was a thing. Jamming, mm-hmm. I miss you. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah, we started out there. Anything? Maybe about 60, 60 something people. Sixty? Well, I don't think was it was ninety so people, but we only sold like thirty something tickets. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh? We just did it because we 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 love party, mm-hmm. yeah. right? And then from there, the, the brand grew from selling thirty tickets to the next year when the Dream Chaser came. Oh we yes, had, we had over two hundred and seventy people. Oh, wow. that brand name was um overboard. Cause we started as cruise, you know, which most brands, <laughs> people start off, you know, people want to start off with a cruise. So we started off with, with the overboard, the cruise, and yeah. then it just, you know, morphed then, into. Yeah. And then during that period too, we realized that everyone was doing cruises. So then, but then land events were on a decline. So yeah. then we branched off. Oh, yeah. Into, so it was like, what we could do right, now to yeah. kind of like stand out since everybody doing right. cruises now and we just decided to take it to the land. And then from there it was, yeah. It was, it was full throttle ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All the way up. Well, thank you so much for coming through. Thank you, dude. Yes, thank, thank you. you so much. He like crossed that really. He tells himself, you get so tight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got that right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for much coming through, guys. We yeah, had a good, good chat. Yeah, man. You know, we got a real feel for the brand, mm-hmm. a real feel for both of you. Like, who are the personalities behind the brand? Yeah. And what is it that people can expect? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, a little yeah. about how you started and how you got where you are now. Yeah, yes, and it means yes. a lot for you. To actually reach out and actually notice us, that's like a step for us. Yeah, I feel like a, I feel like a I celebrity. Feel, you know, yeah. I feel like a reach. <laughs> you know what I mean? I hey, appreciate that. I hear rubbing my temples. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> these things that I want to say, mean, right? I got a face. I can get, <laughs> I can get in trouble <laughs> if I see response. You know? <laughs> I'm just gonna say thank you very much. Yeah, and I appreciate was, that yeah, you took it was, it was time out your one. busy schedules mm-hmm. to come and get the studio mm-hmm. a visit and have a yeah. chat. I look forward to seeing you and everybody else on July 30th. First, yeah, absolutely. So, the third chapter, Tales of the Road. Perfect. So, tonight we're here with Tion. Hey, hey. <laughs> good night. Good night, good night. So, we're here to talk all about your musical journey, mm-hmm. your journey as an artist, how it was producing Slow Wine, yeah. and all your plans for the future, which you have a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> Slow Wine came about via Shanna, really, mm-hmm. probably Trigger Bowl. Yeah. I've known Shanna for quite a long time. But we kind of disconnected throughout the years because mm-hmm. we knew each other through back in our time tent when I was about 10 years old performing mm-hmm. with wow. Peter Ram. Yeah. So then at like 15, when I stopped doing soca, Shanna was managing me. Mm-hmm. We were just doing little school performances, you mm-hmm. know, <laughs> young people yeah. stuff. So then a couple of years ago, we just reconnected. Mm-hmm. We just had a conversation and I told her, you know, I would really like to get back into music, whether it be behind the scenes, just writing music or just being in the space you know to connect with other creatives and stuff like that so shanna messaged me like january 1st this year and she's like so what are we doing this year and i say well you know i'm currently pregnant so <laughs> i don't think that i would want to be at the forefront but i would definitely be willing to help whether it be performance helping with performances helping with some writing being in, in the production and then shanna was like yeah cool 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 everything cool message me about with three months ago and she's like listen to this song here and I listened to his song and Shana's like yeah so you willing to sing it <laughs> like man why not you know yeah, like, why not? yeah so then that is just really how it happened I didn't put too much thought into it I didn't really get to overthinking or saying I'm pregnant I disabled yeah, I can't do this, yeah. Right, yeah. so we went into the studio with Barry from Dread Heart Productions <laughs> and that was such a simple easy process we laid down the vocals within about an hour <laughs> and then it was just you know waiting for the song to drop so, yeah. <laughs> so I just went through a period of saying alright so I record this song and I had no plans on mm. being out this year, but now I need to get it together. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so 
marketing and you know what you can wear and right. pregnant the my forward. clothes don't fit exactly the full words the <laughs> yeah. full production so we just went into overdrive makeup. yeah yeah okay. so that's really how that happened that's quite impressive and that you still decide to forge ahead with it you're yeah. like you know I'm pregnant but don't yeah. worry about that it's going to be a soccer baby Correct. crop over Correct. baby you coming out and he's really scheduled to born on August 1st <laughs> which is yeah. crazy because that's wow. Kadumadi wow. but really and truly though, I'm hoping for any day now yeah right <laughs> <laughs> when I saw you serious last night I was like this girl's ready to pop <laughs> she is ready yeah listen I, I was just at the side of the stage waiting for yeah, so I was on the other end so I could <laughs> look across and see her I was like let's see on there listen, I am like oh my gosh how long is this gonna take right. and we did not know they were in order so I feel like it was just like pulling names yeah, out of there, my right <laughs> <laughs> so just their washers are Tian, Tian, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it was just an awesome experience, mm-hmm. to be honest. And I really love doing it. Yeah, you you see it. You saw the energy yeah. it came through the performance. It's like, she's confident, she's assured, she knows what she's doing. Yeah, I mean, my favorite thing to do is to perform. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, before a performance, I am always so nervous that I keep asking myself, what you do this here to yourself? Right, <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. Why you would ever do this? <laughs> like yesterday, at about minutes to six, I had to take a bathroom break. Yeah. Then the hair started kicking in. And then at like seven o'clock, I'm like, how am I going to do this with this stomach? I yeah. never do this before. Am I going to be able to have the energy? Mm. And I just started to get really anxious. And I think that was the first time that I performed in such a, with such a big crowd. Yeah, that's huge. Huge yeah, problem. in a long time. So I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even just talking about it, no. Right? Yeah, so that meant a lot to me, to be honest. I, li- I liked it. I liked that you did it. You had <laughs> the you. bravery to do it, as you said, because <laughs> getting up on stage in front of all them people, everybody's yeah. staring at you, phones out, correct, you know, it's like. Correct. And obviously, so there's the judgment too. Yeah, exactly. Because this is the, I hear so many whispers about this pregnant woman in the party. <laughs> she about to birth. And even the tweets. Yeah. <laughs> Tweet yeah, somebody tweeted this pregnant lady better don't give birth in so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, you know what? I wouldn't even mind because will... it's eviction time. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> time to go, you time know. <laughs> no, I like that. I like that you still came out, you still gave it your all, yeah. gave a good performance, everything Thank like you. that. It went really, really well. So I hope that you still continue mm-hmm. after you've given birth, mm-hmm. you know, and like you said that you're a songwriter too as well. Yeah. I was doing R&B for a couple of years mm-hmm. and I am a really sad songwriter, to mm-hmm. be honest with you. So so could, writing so could does not come to me naturally. Mm-hmm. I did, however, write a social commentary song for my niece to do mm-hmm. Junior Monarch a mm-hmm. couple of years ago, but obviously COVID. Yeah. So I would need somebody else to sing that song, but that, I, in my opinion, <laughs> as a writer, <laughs> I think it's a really good song and her dad is also into music her father was a drummer in a band called Electric I don't know if you remember that from yeah. years ago yeah years back yeah and he was like yeah let me get you in the studio let me do this song Electric Keisha Christian yep. yeah yep. there we go yeah. that's right yeah. yeah he was the band leader so he was also instrumental in getting me into music mm-hmm. and connecting me with Peter Ram at 10 years old mm-hmm. so I just sent him the song and I was like, yeah, like, I think that my niece, you know, she likes oh, to sing too. Yeah. yeah, but no, she get older and she ain't interested. She interested. Ah. <laughs> so I need a singer for this song. And Shanna also, I think, has seen my potential in mm-hmm. that area. Yeah. So I've also helped her with like, you know, if she was stumbling or something mm-hmm. or she needed help in the area, then she would send it to me and I would say, all right, well, I think, you know, you could change this melody mm-hmm. or we could do this, we could do that. So Shanna has also been helping me mm-hmm. with my song writing journey with Soka so I'm really appreciative of her and just pushing me to do what she knows that I love yeah Mm -hmm. she get like Pull you from R and B into soca. Correct, correct, correct. Remember when you had your blue hair thing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh my that. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sometimes that. I look back at that and then you, I got a couple screws missing. Like, I <laughs> no, I thought I liked that. I was like the whole blue hair phase. <laughs> mm-hmm. I liked it, you know, the mm-hmm. signature look, all that mm-hmm. type of stuff. So it's good to see artists evolve and mm-hmm. then they still keep at the craft. Yeah. And then evolve along with the craft, as you say. You do R&B, you come back to soca, mm-hmm. and then it's like the whole field is wide open because yeah. as we were talking about, say the studio earlier, Robbie was like, not many people could transition between different genres, mm-hmm. even within soca genres. Yeah. Soca is my home, man. Yeah. That's the truth. That's right. What I would say is that I did not have a soca voice, mm-hmm. I think. Soca singers to me are very strong and 
your voice comes over quite powerful and big mm. and my voice is kind of thin mm. and so it has to be trained to cut through mm-hmm. right yeah. so I had to do a lot of vocal training and I even spent some time in the background with Marlon Ligo he runs the Courage and Parry band yeah. yeah I was in his group called Elite Vox mm. and I really had to humble myself and just learn the basics and come back up so I've done a lot of vocal training to be mm. able to sing and even listening to myself last night I'm like all right because <laughs> I'm so yeah, critical right. of myself I'm like all right so you need to fix this and you need to you know I mean your, my mother is like you need to buy a mic and you need to buy an earpiece and you... <laughs> so my whole family is really into this creativity and it is really encouraging mm. to have people supporting me it, you know and so I am looking forward to improving and seeing where I could do better in terms of performances and you know the whole nine yards yeah the whole the, no it's, it's good to see you know you get engaged in it yeah. to see how you evolve as, as you say it's good that you have the support because you most mm-hmm. fans oh you ain't sent time with that <laughs> yeah. that's bare money you're looking no, out you want to buy air piece and money when I was 10 years old and I told my mother I was a really quiet child mm-hmm. right like I would be I would have my personality with my friends but as a child I was just quite reserved and a lot of my mother clients because she was a hairdresser mm-hmm. right so a lot of my mother clients would be like, like she don't talk <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know so when I go to my mom and I'm like well mommy I want to sing mm-hmm. um, and she endorses that yeah. and not knowing whether or not I'm going to actually get on the stage and perform it's like my mother really has to, you yeah. know, believe in believe me and love you. me. Yep. So the first, even performing with Peter Ram for the first time, and he never even met me, is just the, wow. yeah, the belief that these people had in me, not knowing whether I would deliver is crazy. And the truth is, is that I myself probably didn't even know that right. <laughs> I not, could do you it. You conceptualize it's yeah, like, I ain't just going to run and do it. At 10 years old, I run across the pasture in St. George to go on a stage and sing with Peter <laughs> Ram here. And I think it was at that moment when my mother saw the energy that I had on the stage that she said, yeah, boy. Yeah, this, we're running, this is we're it. Running yeah, with we're this. going. We going and down that the road. That is all I've known my whole life. So then I have to ask myself, who am I if I'm not singing? Yeah. Like, so even these past couple of years that I have not been doing it, it's like trying to find, you know. So yeah. what do I do in the interim? Like, do I not do this anymore? Right. Yeah. So I I had to find myself, you know, Come back right. where yeah. I know that it feels like home. Yeah, I like that. I love that. I love the fact you also too went through training. You went back. Mm-hmm. You started back from ground zero and went to the masters and yeah. Marvel League all and came back up and built back up. Listen to yourself mm-hmm. and you know, and you know, okay, this time in, you know, you get the earpiece, you need the mic, all that. Yeah, I love that because people just think you could just jump into. Correct. Listen, I have had my heartbreaks where music is concerned. I mean, the first time that I auditioned for Honey Jam, I crashed and burned mm-hmm. and I did not get in. And I think at that time then people were like, well, this girl can't sing. Mm-hmm. And the truth is, is that I probably could not keep mm-hmm. a key. Yeah. <laughs> I probably could not keep honest, a key for right. a long mm-hmm. time. And so it was like, but if I want to be a singer, I need to be able to sing. Yeah. And when I hear other people, I like oh, this person's song. Right. So then I sing, don't oh, I'm listening to these riffs and I, you know, and they playing them back and they back and they say, yeah, I want a song like this. Yeah. <laughs> so... I think that, you know, you can't just get her and start to sing until you self music singer. People it, think you could just do that. Don't, don't worry about that. Don't worry. So, yeah. So, I really, even at this point now, and I have improved tremendously, I still see the points where I'm like, all right, so I don't need to hold that song. Right. Like, yeah. So, it's a constant improvement process. Mm-hmm. I like that. As you say, you know, you go through it, like you're willing to work through it. Yeah. People... Then you just walk off the street and start singing. And that's it. <laughs> Whatever right. level you are is the level that you will always be at, and it's correct, you, correct. good and you good to go. Cause yeah, so it's always a battle of me against me. Yeah, and being better than I was before. It's that because, constantly evolving. Yeah, and know that I am here. I won't be here to stay, mm-hmm. and I and I won't make an impact too. Yeah. I don't just want to come and sing. I want to be big. Yeah, I mean, because if I can do it, I can do it big, and you that's all that I know. <laughs> As yeah. you say, with the blue hair, yeah. I am extra, and my mother is even more extra, and it it got to be massive yeah it's nothing cool. you keep leaning into that because that's <laughs> really the energy and then there are not many women in this soccer arena correct correct and you know what the reason why i did not even consider being back in soccer for a while is because 
I didn't feel like there were any songs that were actually pushing mm. women forward. So we were really in the background for a long time mm. and males were dominating the yeah. space. So it's like, I need to find a songwriter. Yeah. You know? And I, I I was not hearing enough songs from women that made me feel like this body could write this song. Yeah. So, but Shanna has been doing it because yeah, Shana, yeah, yeah. Shanna has been doing it. <laughs> no, she's been it. doing it. She's yeah. been like hit after hit correct, after hit after correct. hit. I'm like, yo, Shanna Penn hard. Hard. Yeah, she good. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. She real good. So I'm glad she you paired up with her. Yeah, very, very talented. Mm-hmm. And she also seen she just keep going up and out. Correct. So she produced many hits this season. It's like, all right, it's good to hear. Yeah. So I'm glad that you team forces. And that she, sure. you know, she, and our energies mesh really well too. Yeah. So I mean, it was like it was just a connection made in heaven, man. <laughs> that's that's so I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. yeah. So I really do, you know, believe that you should continue in it because as another young female coming mm-hmm. up in the genre, that mm-hmm. like you could be able to and to watch you grow and blossom and really showcase your talent mm-hmm. and crea- creativity because it's not just that you. A song coming, you're like, yeah, I can sing that. Right. You know, you right. actually have a connection with it. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to be particular with the songs that I choose because of the type of voice that I have. Yeah. So, I mean, it takes time. Yeah. It takes time, but it's worth it. I think it's worth it, too. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of effort, too, because we talked about that on other podcast episodes. Like, mm-hmm. how much investment you all give oh my as gosh. an artist. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me about how many times my mother tell me how much money she spent on outfits. Yep. Yep. <laughs> things that people don't consider outfits, makeup. As you said, the, like the production the of production, the music. Mm-hmm. The studio time. Shh, advertising. Advertising. More the marketing yeah, budget. Yeah. It is a lot of money. A lot. People so you don't. really have to love it, to be honest. It's really and truly. You really got to be in because it. Because there's, the, I mean, you don't really see that much returns like when you first start. Yeah. You even have to offer to perform for free. Yeah. You know, you got to go and message the DJs. You got, because nobody's coming to you. No, no. Because who are you? Exactly. <laughs> and that's the truth. So I, listen, I sit on my phone every day trying to figure out, all right, so what next to do here? Because yeah. they need to push this here forward. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's hard. It's a real hard, thankless job because people think, you just become an artist and it's just money it's just Correct. flowing and performances Correct. and you're going to be good to go. But they don't know what goes on behind the it's scenes. It's true. How much work and it also, is. I mean, even just the pressure of wondering if people will love your music yeah. and the critics and, yeah. you know, the people that put in bugs in your ear. Yeah. So you really got to be strong, man. <laughs> yes, it is a lot, yeah. a lot, a lot. And, you know, it's people promising you something and then you come and perform here and then they yep. don't turn or don't pan out. Yeah, or it's just like, you know, well, we know, but you don't know you or you're not big enough right yeah. now. So we can't really make space for you, you know? Well, so you want to make space for yourself. You really and truly. <laughs> so it's glad that you went on stage last night and had, you know, you really gave a presence, yeah. you really gave a showcase yeah. yourself. <laughs> Listen, right now, the video that I posted of the performance is mm-hmm being sent around and it's at 382 dms right no <laughs> more likes than the video actually has <laughs> but i'm like all right send it to everybody send it to yeah, everybody let yeah. everybody learn this song no problem exactly get into it you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> you make me not gonna go back and check the stats on bad days <laughs> <laughs> listen look and then i was like look they tag me i know you ain't know my acne right yeah i could i was like <laughs> cheese on brothers we were just like churning it out you know yeah yeah, yeah. So, but i have to say that your energy is amazing too look really? honestly <laughs> you know, like, really i observe you and i really really like your energy man yeah thank you i appreciate yeah. that <laughs> no problem yeah it's good i I glad i just glad to be able to speak to a young artist mm-hmm. to hear what it is that they have to go through to understand by the process and help people understand yeah. what it is for y'all, what y'all go through, what you experience. Yep. What the whole process is like, especially season, and then you gotta think about out of season yeah. and then next season, all that what type of it, stuff. What it takes to actually, you know, everything that it takes to build it yourself, to put yourself in people's presence, to yes. put yourself out there to be judged, for people to decide whether or not this song is a hit or, you know, yes. we wanna pass this. So it's, like this. it's yeah. been a trailer and error. Yeah, really and true. And then, like, having to go through, like, you do all the studio time and you get mix and master and properly done. And it's like you putting it out there and then you could see songs that are absolute garbage just <laughs> right? going up in the air. And people, oh my God, I want to hear this one time. <laughs> Hurt your heart, like, man. Yeah. Hurt your like, heart. So much effort into writing this song, producing it, getting mm-hmm. this done. And it's just, yeah. Yeah. And then it's song just stays there. Just but there. sometimes, you know what? I think that artists themselves, 
don't know what to do. Yeah. And that's why it's important to have a team of people around that you. That is true. Because being a creative, I know that it is easy to just be stuck in this is my song, this is my baby, mm -hmm. and I want people to like it. Yeah. But not knowing how to promote it, how to get it in people's face. So you are to treat yourself like a business. Yes. So that's right. So it is sales. I call you and they could call you ten times to for you to answer. Yeah. And I worked in sales. So I think, you know what, staying away from music and doing my job and doing marketing, because I work for a Canadian marketing company, mm -hmm. influencer marketing. Mm -hmm. So Everything that I have done outside of music has also helped me to be able to work in other facets for my own self, yeah. right? So I think that that is also what's helping me in promoting the song. But really and truly, it, it, takes, a, it takes a village. Yeah, it takes, really does take yeah. a village. Yeah, a whole team. Cause you can't do it on your own because yep. you see, you got to call somebody, you got but the interviews, you got to talk to this one, you got to push yeah, and get yourself and I think the there. artists need to educate themselves to on distribution of music, mm -hmm. uploading to streaming platforms, mm -hmm. you know, uh, investing, because not only investing in the production, but investing in promoting it. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, yeah. the list oh, was oh, on. On and on and on, on. Yeah, but art creators are sensitive people. Yes. So rejection, you know, it's yes. like... It, yeah. It, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's daunting. Yeah, it could really, really hurt, you know, it really sting mm -hmm. your feelings. As you said, the same thing, but when you got a song, you feel this is your baby. Yeah. And you putting it out there to the world and people basically knocking out your hands. Say, I want yeah, that. Correct. I want sign out. So I want sign fast, you know, I yeah. want sign bashy. Or... I think the idea is to disconnect you, the person, mm -hmm. from the song. True. Yeah. Yes. So this because this person does not like this song does not mean that you are a bad person exactly. or you're a bad singer. You know, they don't like you, the human. Right, exactly. Yeah, so I had to do that as well. Cause you know, I would think for your sanity, yeah, yeah cause otherwise yeah. it would be like, oh, you know, any kind of <laughs> foolish comment. Just crumble in the yeah. ball and roll up. Dying. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's hard, yeah. I just want people to understand how much hard work it is mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. operate in this artistic world. Especially in Krapova, where everything is super intense and fast paced because mm -hmm. it's only a short space of time. Yeah. And especially as a young woman, now trying to navigate that space to an like, you know, it can be even harder because it's male dominated space. Correct. Correct. Like, you know, you know, you know how people listen to you. right now for me now with this. Time. Exactly. Exactly. Even more now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so I'm very glad. That you still push through and you still came through and you still get yourself out there and put yourself out there and push yourself forward. Thank on. you. Thank you. I am proud of myself. For yes, that. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's brilliant stuff. So thank you very much, Dion, for joining us on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Can you let us know your handle so people can know where to find you and your music sure, online? and so that you can tag me in the next performance. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my IG is Bohemian T, mm -hmm. and that's T-I-A, or you can just type in Tion Hernandez mm -hmm. on Instagram, on TikTok, on Twitter, and I'm going to come up, Bohemian T. That's me. Tion, T-I-O-N-N-E. Yeah. There we go. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. I got it. <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Lou. <laughs> Thank you for listening to our podcast. This episode was recorded and produced by Robbie at Nameless Productions. That's Nameless.